All right. Um, well, yeah, so I guess it's time we're going to get started here. Uh, so welcome. Um, you should be in um, machine learning 574. Um, so uh, today, I'm going to be a bit light. Uh, I don't know if we'll take up the whole time or not. So we're normally going to be meeting from um, uh, 1230 to 145. I've already lost my voice first day. Um, from 1230 to 145. Um, this is a, a blended course, which means uh, technically um, um, I can use um, some or all of these uh, scheduled face-to-face -face sessions, uh, at least half. Uh, at the moment, I am planning to, um, you know, we will be meeting for all of them. Uh, we'll see how it goes, right? Um, um, I am actually, um, doing this class simultaneously with some online sections as well. So I'll probably be having to Zoom these and uh, we'll be having to post the videos as well. Um, so a little bit, not too certain about some of the structure here. So we'll see how, in, in terms of uh, how we'll do meetings and stuff. So, But um, I'm good to the usual stuff here. Um, um, uh, you know, talk about the syllabus, the structure of the class assignments, things like that, see if people have questions. Uh, I'll probably maybe I'll jump in and talk, uh, uh, start a little bit of some of the content. And we'll talk some about some Python and stuff like that. So, um, first of all, um, you know, if you haven't logged into our course, you know, you're behind. You need to, to make certain that you can log in and access the course uh, today, uh, right now, or, or once we're done with the, the, the class here. So, make sure you need to get in. Um, um, uh, even though it is a blended course, we will have face to face sessions. Um, Pretty much all the material is going to go through online. So all the assignments, uh, probably all the tests. I, I might change my mind, you know. So I might do it like a test in class here, face to face, um, for the zero uh, one B students. But uh, at the moment, uh, I am planning on tests and assignments uh, being online. Um, so you know, you might want to look through the the syllabus on your own. Uh, let me just go through kind of some of the highlights. So my name is Derek, Derek Carter. Uh, I'm I'm a faculty here uh, in the department for quite a few years. Uh, this is one of my main courses. Uh, this is one of my 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 funner courses. I, I really like machine learning. Um, it's related to my research interests as well. So I do a lot of research uh, uh, adjacent to machine learning things like that. Uh, actually, more like deep learning and stuff is is primarily um, um, uh, where I do a lot of work in. So. Um, um, I, I do have office hours for this class. I encourage you to come by if you have questions, you want to talk about machine learning, you want to talk about thesis projects um, or other machine learning projects, things like that. I always like to hear about things like that. Um, I've kind of loaded, you know, just for your information, I've, I've loaded up all my uh, teaching and face-to-face and -face stuff on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So my office hours are going to be kind of early in the morning on Tuesdays and Thursdays, eight to nine before I do teaching or right after this class. Um, so uh, from two to three thirty. Um, I'm I I I always am over in Science Two Fifty Five, um, and because I've got all the stuff, um, all my face-to-face -face stuff on Tuesdays, Thursdays, semesters, uh, you definitely will find me. Um, in the uh, the science building 355 for these office hours. Um, so um, although, you know, uh, I, I can always get called away. So we, uh, uh, our faculty, we always tell you, it's good if you really do need to have a meeting to email first, get an appointment or something like that. But, but you can always try and come by. I always welcome you to come by if you have questions or, or something. Uh, look me up in Science 355. That's the high performance computing lab. We've got some hardware in there for performance computing and we got some some rack servers with some gpus which is what i mostly use for my machine learning and deep learning um kind of the um, stuff that i do so. um so um if you're not familiar with the course um you know just some of the things so we're looking at machine learning in this course uh machine learning is really kind of a subset of ai so if I was, uh, and, and you know, machine learning AI is pretty hot right now. You might have heard of all the hype about um, large language models and and uh, generative AI, right? So yeah, we've got things like uh, AI. 
uh, it's not a big field um, and a bit ill-defined, but that has to do with artificial intelligence. So, so you know, broadly defined, that's really about making machines do things that would normally require a human to do. Right? So doing can't say much more. Right? Within that, you can think of machine learning, call that ML, it's kind of a subset of AI. Uh, machine learning is really specifically about uh, algorithmic approaches to uh, building models, right? So, so our course is about machine learning. So we're gonna be looking at some of the fundamental algorithms, methods of machine learning this course. So, uh, you know, we're gonna be covering the basics, um, like, uh, uh, so doing what's known as supervised learning. Um, I'm sure we jumped into to talk about content already, but uh, most of the course will, will spend on what's known as supervised learning. So, that, so doing sim simple models like linear regression, um, but then we'll look at uh, like uh, um, uh, support vector machines and what else? So some other kinds of supervised learning methods. Um, uh, trees, uh, we'll look at decision trees, which are uh, very useful. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll spend about two thirds of the course on supervised learning and then uh, a little bit of the course, another one third or a little bit less on what's known as unsupervised learning. So we'll look at some uh, clustering, uh, K nearest neighbors, um, um, uh, some principal component analysis and things like that. So and if you don't know what any of those are, or what most of those are, that's fine. That's what this course is for. So, um, so I, I, I tend to, to uh, emphasize kind of the more practical hands-on stuff. So in fact, we use a textbook called Hands-On Machine Learning for this course. So uh, we do a lot of things with actually using Python, uh, using the main libraries for machine learning, right? So, so you'll spend as much time kind of more on the practical sorts of skills of, of the libraries for doing data analysis, for doing uh, machine learning, for doing uh, data cleaning, um, things like that. So. Um, so, let's see here, where's my textbook? Oh, here it is. Um, I do have one required textbook. Uh, so one of the big problems I, I, um, actually, I forgot one thing, so, um, I, I, I was mentioning generative AI and deep learning. So if you're interested, uh, we have a deep learning course we usually do um, in the spring. Uh, it's a very good course to take after machine learning because we build the um, stuff we talk about that we learned with machine learning and deep learning as well. Neural networks. And really, if you've been following all about the generative AI, chat GPT, and stuff like that, so the generative learning really uses deep learning subset of that. Right? So, but you know, if you really want to understand that kind of stuff, chat GPT or um, generative um, um, visual. Um, and pictures and things and blanking on the name. But if you really want to understand that stuff, you know, this is really the good place to start, right? So if you get a good foundation of machine learning, uh, that's where you need to start. It's really deep learning and then kind of what's going on uh, with um, um, now with this big, um, everybody excited about so-called generative learning systems. So, um, so one of the biggest problems about machine learning, there's, there's all kinds of materials, uh, good materials. Uh, in fact, I don't, uh, I was just looking here. Um, if, if you look on, on our uh, course website, um, um, I do have a link to additional resources. Uh, I can see I, I really need to add some more stuff on here. There's lots of really good machine learning resources, right? Uh, I encourage you to, you know, uh, if you're at all interested in the topic, to not just use kind of the textbook that we give, but to find some other stuff that really helps you. Let me know stuff that you find useful, right? Because like I said, one of the biggest problems is that there's so much out there that um, um, I have a hard time picking or recommending stuff uh, for students. So, so if people find stuff that you, that you really like that helps you learn basic concepts or whatever you're interested in. Um, let me know about stuff. Um, anyway, so back to the syllabus. So, so you know, the um, you you 
are probably not going to be able to get away without not having the required textbook, um, the assignments and things, uh, you know, all, all the readings and stuff that I give you formally for the class uh, come from this and some other resources, but the main ones are from this hands-on machine learning textbook. It's a really good textbook, um, so, so it's, it's worth, uh, uh, you're worth getting. Um, there's like, a, it's up to the third edition, so I'm not certain if I've got all of my, um, I'm not sure if I got all my pages or references or chapters updated for the third edition, but um, I am I am using the third edition currently. So if at all possible, you're probably fine with like the second edition, but if all possible, if you're getting a new one, try and pick up the third edition. Like I said, you probably can't get away um, or lead, it'll make things a lot easier for assignments and stuff. So most of the assignments, uh, and things, I mean, all the lecture notebooks and, and the materials that I have are kind of most of them are coming from this once we get into, uh, once we get past the first couple of weeks here. And I'll talk a little bit about kind of our schedule and stuff. Here. Uh, but this is a really good book. We actually are only going to cover the first half of this book. So, uh, the second half, um, so so part one is really basic machine learning, right? So you can maybe see from there. So, you know, uh, we'll cover most of these chapters. Um, um, we're gonna look at uh, classification. Um, we're gonna look at linear regression and linear and, and logistic regression. Um, we're gonna look at support vector machines. Spend some time on decision trees, that um, um, stuff like that. And then also a little bit for unsupervised learning, which is really the dimensionality reduction, the unsupervised learning. But we only go up to like chapter nine there. The second half of the textbook is really about deep learning and neural networks. We we'll use some of that material for the deep learning course um, in the spring. But yeah, the main libraries that we use are Scikit-Learn in this class, uh, which is a machine learning library, along with Python and, and a few other Python scientific libraries. Um, stop me, if, you know, if I go, to, I usually, I sometimes go too fast. So let me know if you have questions about anything, just raise your hand or shout it out. So, uh, but that's our textbook that we're gonna be using. You know, it's a really good one. You know, so at all possible, you really need to get that. Um, I, I, you know, um, there's, there's a couple of others here, but uh, like I said, uh, for textbook, there's lots of really good, I need to update this. There's lots of really good uh, newer ones that I should put up there. Um, I'll, I'll try and make a post, an announcement, uh, get some more resources and put, put some more of these on the um, additional resources when I get, get a chance here. because All kinds of really good new textbooks in the last year or two on machine learning and deep learning. So, um, <clears throat> Um, oh, uh, although, you know, I'm skipping a little bit here, uh, we're actually going to uh, go into, so if you haven't done Python before or familiar with the the, the Python scientific uh, library stack, um, we will spend the first two weeks or two or three weeks, uh, uh, really not on machine learning, but um, uh, just looking at Python and uh, some of the libraries that we're going to be using a lot. So I think it's just our first two weeks or so. Um, yeah, I mean, our first two weeks, we kind of are just going to look at Python and we're going to look at like NumPy and pandas and stuff. Um, and then we, we get into scikit-learn and start talking about machine learning in week three, right? So um, um, my thought that I interrupted, I started saying that the, for the first two weeks, uh, there is a link to, I really recommend this. So if, 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 uh, if you know Python, great. If, if not, I don't really, um, I don't, I um, don't, um, I'm not expecting you to know Python or be an expert on it or even have used it before. Python's an easy language to, to, to use, uh, to pick up. Um, we're going to be using Python for all of our uh, programming assignments. Um, this is a really good book. Again, again, there's all kinds of good Python books, but I really, in particular, to this uh, uh, learning with Python. Uh, it's a free book, another advantage of it. So uh, for the first two weeks, I recommend you um, uh, if you need to review or, or learn the basics of Python, the textbook you should use is that one with about the first six or uh, so chapters of that. Uh, we'll go through the basics of um, of them. Um, of um, using Python. I wanted to click on that link. Let me, huh. Anyway. Um, all right, so those are all the materials uh, you do. Um, hopefully I've got this in the syllabus.
Um, yeah, I do need to add something on syllabus here. So you really do need to have your own system, uh, compute system that you can install uh, a, a, um, um, uh, Python and the Nita libraries. Okay. I've got some materials on setting up the environment that you need to do the assignments. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to talk about that very much today or not. Maybe I will. Uh, but um, um, I am expecting you to have access to your own system where you can uh, install stuff. So at a minimum, you need to install Python and you need to install the uh, like about, about half a dozen libraries, Python libraries in there. So that you can uh, do the uh, the assignments and run the lecture notebook or, or read through the lecture notebooks and things like that in the class. So um, you know if, if you have an issue if you don't have an available system let me know you know as soon as you can like today. Um, but uh, but you will need to have access to that to install some stuff and, and do the assignments. Um, but you know. Um, 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 it is a graduate course, so I, I don't expect you necessarily have done Python before, but I will expect you to be able to pick up enough of it in the first week or two here that you can do stuff, right? So pretty quick, uh, but Python is an easy language um, to, to do that with. So. Um, all right, so most people um, you know, want to know a little bit about uh, the assessments. Um, this might change. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm maybe going to be dropping the final project because I got too many people uh, this semester. So I'm not certain I can do those. I've done those fast. So um, um, there will be two tests, um, and there are about six um, assignments. There might be one more or one less. Um, um, uh, so that's the majority, going to be the majority of the assessment for the class, right? So um, uh, the assignments will come about every two or three weeks. So there'll be one due uh, at the end of our second week um, or at the end of our third week um, over kind of Python and stuff. Um, and, and approximately every two or three weeks, um, um, uh, we'll have an assignment. The first one is really just about basic Python and using the Python scientific libraries. Um, so, like I said, you know, the uh, the syllabus, um, I do need to update that a little bit because I'm not really certain about doing a big project. Maybe I need to think about that. So if I, if I do remove that, then those points will probably go, you know, go up to about... Uh, maybe you know twenty three percent each on the exams, and then the other six points um, spread out into the, uh, the the six or seven assignments. Um, the uh, I'll talk some more about the assignments here uh, probably later on. So the assignments are all. All in the form of, uh, of, uh, of doing some work in uh, a Python. It's known as a Python notebook, right? So I'll give you a notebook. You have to write code and write uh, descriptions and things in that, and then you submit that uh, it, up to my Leo. So, um, and the tests um, um, often are pretty similar. So so the test might be a Python notebook with other stuff as well for the, the two tests that we'll have for the class. Um, <clears throat> Let me see, what else? So, Uh, and the rest of the things are, you know, you can read through those. Um, the, um, uh, I, I probably should skip past this. Uh, um, uh, let me just mention up front that the, um, uh, all assignments and tests are individual. So I'm expecting uh, everybody to do their own work. Um, so, uh, which means that, you know, find to discuss things with people, uh, talk about the, uh, you know, the, the topics that we're learning with um, you know, study groups and things. But when it comes time to actually writing 
the code on the assignments or doing the the things for the tests if we if we do them online um you know you need to be in a room by yourself doing your own work uh if i if i you know i have done this in the past if if there is work that's obviously being uh, done by multiple people or uh, copies of past submissions for work uh, or whatever. If, if it's not original work that was worked on individually this semester, uh, you're in danger of getting zero on the assignment uh, first time or um, uh, multiple offenses. You might, you might have sent people to the, um, you know, the um, um, administration offices for academic discipline. So, do work on stuff on your own. They, they are meant to be done. Uh, you know, I need to know kind of what you understand as an individual about the stuff that we're doing in terms of the assignments and claims. Um, so there's there's a tentative sub syllabus, uh, ten, tentative um, schedule of things. Um, so, you know, our first part is really kind of an introduction more to Python, um, although the third week then we get into scikit-learn, which is really the, the main library that we're going to be looking at uh, using to do machine learning in. Um, and then um, part two and three, uh, uh, we get into is the heart of the, the course, right? So we'll look at um, regression and classification. Um, and then we'll look at various machine learning methods. I already mentioned some of these. So support vector machines and decision trees mainly are some of the big ones. So the, the biggest ones, if I had to pick, if you're not doing deep learning, some of the most useful are nowadays are like decision trees or ensemble trees are still very useful in lots of contexts. So um, like random source, things like that. Good thing to know. Support vector machines also are still uh, widely used and for particular contexts uh, will perform as good or not better than a neural network or deep learning. Right? So we'll look at all those, but starting with basic, what's known as linear regression. Uh, and then we'll spend a little bit of time on unsupervised unsup 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 learning at the end of the course. Um, and you'll learn kind of what all those are and what we mean by supervised versus unsupervised um, and uh, different kind of concepts on how you train a model and how you validate a model and how you um, uh, test how well a model is performing. So practical kinds of things like that are part of the course as well. Um, let's see, I think. I think those are the main things. Unless somebody wants to uh, ask her on something clarified about uh, anything else. So, um, so I guess I can get into, um, I'll I talk a little bit about content here. Um, so, um, I probably won't be doing too much traditional like lectures with like slides and things. So mostly for this course, I do like to bring up actual, the what are known as Python notebooks. I'll probably do that here in a second. Um, and kind of work through the problem. So either work through the lecture notebooks that you're supposed to be working through on yourself, uh, but also talk about the assignments, uh, work on problems and things in class. So, uh, most of the times we'll be doing stuff like that. There are some, uh, I don't have complete coverage on things, but there are some lecture videos uh, already posted online for different topics as well. So you don't have those. Uh, and like I said, I need to update some things, but um, hopefully um, um, uh, in some cases, that, that I need to add in more. There's lots of other additional resources in terms of other courses that could be useful for you, uh, things like that. that I want to give you. So for this first week, um, 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 you can get started. You know, do get that textbook. Uh, get a, get a copy of that. Start reading on it. Uh, but the um, the main thing um, is you start with either reviewing or learning the basics of Python. So this first week, there's a couple of lecture notebooks here, um, which take us through the basics of Python programming. I might ask you to do that this first week here. Um, and um, I should have had it somewhere, but uh, you know, that the first couple of chapters of this, yeah, chapter one through seven of the Think Python um, um, covers um, kind of the stuff you should be trying to learn or review this first week here. So. Um, 
So that's stuff like we've got the HTML version here. So that's you know the basics of Python. So variables, writing functions, um, doing um, writing loops, uh, and then some other basic data structures, strings, and lists and things. That's kind of what I expect you to try to get through here this first week. Um, so, so let me um, um, go ahead and, and um, talk about um, the uh, setting up the stuff so you can do the assignments um, and run the lecture notebooks and things. So there is a rec uh, suggested um, link here with instructions for setting up a, um, um, a environment in a virtual container. You don't have to use this, uh, but um, this is the reference one. Um, this one that I described here, so there's, there's a link uh, I'll go back to that. If, if you look at the getting started, um, there's a link to a repository here on Bitbucket. Uh, that has the instructions. You know, I encourage you, if you can, to go ahead and use this. Uh, if you're not, um, uh, I'm going to post uh, the exact versions of the libraries that we're going to be using and stuff. So you could uh, install uh, natively a uh, version of Python and install the libraries you're going to use on your own, uh, but you do need to be careful because slight differences in versions might cause you code not to work when I run it on my reference environment, right? So if you want to be absolutely certain, you do want to use the um, virtual environment that I show you how to set up here. Or secondarily, I will post later on here uh, this week uh, the actual versions of Python and the actual version of the libraries. If, if you match those version uh, versions, you shouldn't have issues, even if you install your own Python natively on your system or whatever. So, um, but if you're worried about that, you know, um, there is a, a reference virtual machine. To use this, you need to install, um, uh, what, three things, Git, um, VirtualBox, and Vagrant. Uh, I think there's a video here showing how to do this as well somewhere. Um, So I, I, I didn't really want to go through these um, in um, real detail, but uh, let me just show you kind of real quickly. So if you have it, if you have Git installed on your system, uh, you should be able to clone this repository here. This repository has everything you need for the assignments and for the lecture notebooks. So even if you install your own version of Python, you'll still want to get, you'll still want to install Git um, and clone this repository so that you basically download all the, uh, the the materials that you'll need to do the stuff for the class, right? So once you have Git installed, um, you can um, do the step for you. I'm going to jump to this. I go I go back to this, but um, if you have Git installed, you should be able to clone the repository. Um, um, to tell the truth, I mean, there is other ways to do this. So like on, um, on Bitbucket, you can probably like, oh, you can probably go to downloads and uh, download the repository. I wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage you to do that, but uh, that would probably give you like a zip. I don't know what exactly, yeah, it gives you like a zip. Now that might work for you, um, but you know, if you, you know, Git is a good thing to learn anyway. So if you have Git installed, um, um, you can just clone the repository like it's shown here. Right, do this Git clone step. I mean, this is really just downloading the file. Right, so there's nothing really fancy happening for the Git clone. We're not really using Git in this class if you're not familiar with it. I, I only use it as a tool here, so you can download um, um, all the stuff that you need uh, to work with things. But it can be as simple as, as just doing this here. So let me um, um, just show you on my system. I recommended, uh, you, you do need to do this from, from the command line. So um, I usually put all my repositories that I clone in a subdirectory, something like repos, right? We can see that. Um, 
So if you have Git installed, um, you can just uh, do the Git clone command and it will basically just download everything that you need, right? I'm gonna, I've already done this once. I don't wanna do it again here. So I'm gonna, um, I'll give it into a different name here. So if, if you do this without specifying a name, it will create a new directory in whatever directory you're in called ML Python class. So uh, um, if I do that, uh, you'll see it says it's cloning. So I'll just clone it down in here. And without this third or fourth parameter here, it'll clone it into a directory called ML Python class. So the result, if you've got Git installed correctly, and after doing that, if you look on your file system, Um, so for me, you know, like I said, I already did this git clone step here. So in my repo subdirectory, I keep, keep hitting that. <laughs> my repo subdirectory, um, I've got my, um, a little bit small, but I've got my directory after doing the clone called the ML type, right? So you should be able to do th the same thing. If you do the git clone, Wherever you clone it into, you'll find a new directory after successfully doing it called ML Python class that has all the, the material. So in particular, um, majority assignments, although don't work too far ahead. So you can start working on assignment one, uh, but I might change or update assignment two or other future ones, right? But there is versions of those assignments already in there. I'll let you know when it's safe to start working on assignment two once I uh, update it or modify it. Um, and uh, all the the, uh, the lecture notebooks that we're gonna be using are under the lectures. Um, so in particular, this first week, um, there's a couple of notebooks. Um, the ones that I referred to for, for week one are under the Python stack. That was supposed to mean, so this this was the content about running the, the Python scientific stack. So learning Python, um, which is what the first three are for this week, and then learning the scientific libraries like NumPy, Matplotlib. So the main ones that we're going to be using for this class are NumPy. You have, you have to learn the basics of NumPy and Matplotlib, uh, maybe some pandas, um, and then scikit-number, right? Um, and that's another thing. I, I'll post this as an announcement, but you really shouldn't be using any other libraries for the assignments unless you check with me first, except these, these ones that I mentioned here just now, right? So you pretty much should be doing everything with NumPy, Matplotlib, pandas, and scikit-learn. Um, and basic Python. If, if you find yourself using something else or wanting to use something else, you probably better check with me first whether it's okay. Um, there are other. So after the first two weeks, um, most of the, the other lecture notebooks are in the HOML. That stands for the hands-on machine learning. So notice these are all the IPYNB. I'll show these, running these in a second here. But those are IPython notebooks or they're usually called Jupyter notebooks nowadays. So these these have in the lecture notebooks here. These are the stuff that in my lecture videos and the stuff I'll probably go through in class um, um, about our topics: data exploration, binary classification, linear regression, stuff like that. All right. Um, there's some other things here. So all the data that we'll be using for the assignments and for the lecture notebooks and stuff should be in the data directory. Um, okay, so I, I skipped here. I showed the Git clone. So like I said, you could, um, uh, even if you install Python yourself, uh, you, you you probably still want to, you know, maybe clone the repository. You'll, ha you'll have to get the file somehow, clone them or download them, right? So you'll want to probably want to get use Git and do the Git clone. Uh, if you want to use the reference uh, virtual environment, um, you have to install um, um, VirtualBox. So, so it uses VirtualBox and a tool called Vagrant. Um, and I don't want to go into these. I think this is working, although if you do use this and you have problems, let me know, right? Um, so in, inside of, of, of this virtual environment, it actually uses uh, an Anaconda distribution. So it actually uses Anaconda to install version of Python and to install the libraries that you'll need for all of the uh, notebooks and things, right? Um, 
So there are instructions here. Um, and uh, if you have a, a Mac, um, uh, if you have one of the newer Macs with the M1 or the M2 chips, these instructions, it, it, the Vagrant and VirtualBox won't work. You have to use the alternative instructions. Um, so I don't have as much details on those, but if you look at the first or second announcement, there is a link, which most people seem to, to be able to successfully use. Um, of, um, um, or it's in the getting started maybe of, um, uh, oh, here, yeah. So most people uh, for the M1 or now the M2 Mac um, can follow those instructions to set up uh, a Python using Anaconda um, or some Python distribution um, successfully. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we don't need the Vagrant and VirtualBox? Um, yeah, uh, you can't. Uh, if you do have an M1 or M2 Mac, um, you you can't use Vagrant or VirtualBox anyway. So you do have to use kind of a native install. So, and you'll just want that link, uh, try it there. If you have problems, let me know. You know, um, I'm not a big Mac person, but I can help you a little bit. But, but yeah, I've said, like I said, most people that have newer um, um, Apple-based um, hardware seem to have no problems with that. So, uh, so it's, it's been working fun. Um, all right. So anyway, if, 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 um, if you want to use this environment though, uh, if you install VirtualBox and Vagrant, um, and then you do the git clone, uh, then then it should work to actually run uh, the the Jupyter Hub uh, inside of the virtual environment. So after you do the git clone, uh, we'll use uh, step five to actually bring up the virtual environment. Let me show you how that works in case um, people are interested in trying this out or doing this here. So. Um, For me, I already did the git clone uh, in my repo subdirectory. So, after you do the clone, if you change into that ML Python subdirectory, so you have to be in this directory before you do the Vagrant up. So, Vagrant and VirtualBox, if you're not familiar with them, they're just virtualization technologies. So again, this isn't really the purpose of this class, but this is, you know, if you learn learning about virtualization, so using containers like Docker or VirtualBox or other things, it's a really good skill to know some of the basics of. I and mean, it's really important in, in data science and machine learning, uses a lot of containerization and virtualization technology. So this is an example of that. So in this case, we're using VirtualBox um, and this tool called Vagrant to run um, a um, um, a container that runs a reference uh, version of, of Linux and runs Jupyter Hub inside of it, right? So if you change into ML Python, if you have Vagrant and VirtualBox installed, when you do a Vagrant up, it actually starts the container. So, so it actually starts the um, um, virtual container running. Um, so I must've had it already running here. You can do, there's lots of, I, I probably give some of this, some examples of these, so you can find out what the status is of your container by using the status. Um, so it's currently running here. So um, you should use you should use the command line. So you shouldn't stop um, the. Uh, you should try and halt your container before you like shut down your machine. So it's not a good idea if I have. A, a vagrant or a virtual box container running to just shut down my machine. It's kind of like just uh, turning off your computer using your power button. I mean, nine times out of 10, it won't be a problem, but sometimes you'll get uh, an inconsistent, you know, write on your hard drive and it won't, you know, you'll, you'll end up uh, corrupting something, right? So it's a good idea uh, before you actually, if you have your container running to halt it before you actually shut down your host system, like I just did there. So back to this though. So if you are using the reference, um, um, if you've got Vagrant and VirtualBox installed, and if you have the repository clone, you should be able to do a Vagrant up. Um, and like I said, this runs basically a just a basic Ubuntu Linux system, um, and it'll run fine if on Mac or or Windows. So it'll be running Ubuntu in the container, and it runs Jupyter Hub. It runs Jupyter Hub, um, which I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, so it forwards to that on port eight thousand. 
and it should be uh, doing what's known as um, um, uh, syncing that, that folder. So it's basically syncing that folder um, of your files on your host system into the virtual machine so that you can access all the lecture notebooks and stuff uh, inside of that Jupyter Hub in the container. So what that looks like is, uh, again, this is all you know, um, in the description of using that. So once you have your container up, um, assuming there weren't any problems when it came up, um, you'll need to open up a, a browser. So it actually just uses a regular web browser, web, web interface. Um, and you just point it to um, Hopefully that's not too small. So basically, you just point your browser, um, the one twenty seven zero zero one. If you don't know, that's just a, a special IP address that means look on my local system for a web for for the the server. Um, and instead of going to the normal HTTP port, go to port eight thousand because that's where the Jupyter Hub uh, or that's where it's forwarding all. The, the Jupyter Hub is actually running on the container on port eight thousand and is forwarding port eight thousand on the container. To port 8000 on my host system. So if I connect to that port 8000 on my host system, um, you know, and assuming you got everything run, you should get access to Jupyter Hub. And again, if you don't use the container, that's okay. Although, it, you know, this is the safest thing to do to make certain you have exactly the same versions of the libraries and the software I'm going to be using when I do the grading. Uh, but um, uh, even if you can install it yourself natively using like an Anaconda distribution on your own system, you'll still need to figure out how to run, you know, Jup a Jupyter Hub server so you can run the Jupyter notebooks. So you get a similar thing, even if you install it by hand natively, all right? So once you have this up in your browser for the container that I give you, it'll be different if you install it by hand, but for the container I'd give you, um, the uh, sorry, the the it's got a default user called Vagrant with the password is just the same as the user Vagrant, right? So you just have to know that the, the username is Vagrant, password is Vagrant. Um, that's you know, that's listed um, down in these instructions down here. So the, the URL you need and the username and password. Um, So however you do it, you need to be able to run uh, something like a Jupyter Hub or a Jupyter Lab um, environment so that you can um, look at the lecture notebooks here, right? Um, so let me talk about it. Maybe I won't get into Python too much, but uh, I can tell you a little bit about using Jupyter Notebooks. So that would be uh, the last uh, kind of the best thing to, to look at here. So. Um, um, in the reference environment I give you, when you start this up, you'll find that there's a subdirectory called ML Python class. So that is why I told that's that's the folder that's shared, right? So even though you cloned it onto your host system, that folder is shared into the container, right? So I can actually see the same files, right? So again, if I look in that ML Python class, like I was showing you in the file browser um, on my host system, um, I'll have access to all the same files. So we got the assignments data. So uh, in particular, so let's look at um, our lectures, right? So um, um, so, you know, this is the thing you should be doing for the first week here. So for example, uh, I gave you these three notebooks um, you know, to supplement the reading of the Think Python book, right? So if you want to use, learn the basics of Python, um, um, and definitely before the end of this week, I mean, ideally by tomorrow or Thursday, get Python installed. If you have problems with it, see me or email me, you know, no later than Thursday. If, if you're having issues, you can't get a good environment set up. Even my, either my reference environment or, or some um, of, of your own hand installed uh, version of Python. Right, because you, you need to have this up so you can run the, the lecture notebooks. That's the main way that I'm 
uh, asking you to kind of learn the content, right? So, um, and also do the programming assignments. We'll do these all in IPython. So if you double click on an IPython notebook in Jupyter Hub, uh, it'll bring it up. It'll look something like this. Right? So um, just a, um, a few things about Jupyter Notebooks. Um, if you've never run these before, these are uh, an example of a cell-based um, environment. Um, so these are really meant to be kind of like for, for uh, self-documenting code. Um, or it's really meant to be an environment where you mix uh, written descriptions with code, right? So it's meant to be more like something where you, you read instead of a traditional bit of code that you execute, right? Readable code, right? So you have, there's actually three different kinds of cells in the Jupyter Notebook, uh, but we're only going to be using two. There, there's things called markdown cells, uh, and there's things called uh, code cells, right? So the, the, you can see the first two types here. So markdown is really cells for um, textual information. So for stuff that you would read, right? Uh, and it's a markdown cell because it uses a markup language called markdown, right? So if you're familiar with like HTML or other types of markup languages, the same idea is that um, 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 we can write text in English or other natural human languages. Uh, but we can mark it up. So we can use like a pound sign to represent uh, a level one header. Uh, two pound signs means level two header. Oops. Three is a level three. So on, you know, we've got other markup. Um, um, you will have some assignments where you have to write um, a, uh, you know, uh, an explanation or description or something, you need to use markdown cells. If I ever give you, uh, you know, a, a directive to explain something or, you know, um, 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 uh, something like that. So anything written should go into a markdown cell. Um, so, so there's lots of other, I won't go through. Uh, I think I have some links somewhere about, um, Markdown using using Markdown markup language. So some of the basics are you can have bullets lists using just dashes. You can have numbered lists, uh, enumerated lists. Um, Do things like um, you know, italic and bold. Um, I should. So you might be wondering. I mean, you know, what? I mean, it looks like it doesn't look it just looks like the markdown, right? So, uh, it, to to actually render a cell, whether it's code or markdown, uh, you can run the cell, or you can just hit uh, like Shift Enter. So, um, you know, there, there's a complete list of keyboard shortcuts. If you look at the help, show, show keyboard shortcuts, so you can get the, the, the main one. So particularly if you want to render a, a run a cell, um, um, Control enter runs the selected cell and doesn't advance. I usually just use like shift enter or I guess alt enter run select. Oh, alt enter will run the cell and insert a new one underneath. Um, yeah, shift enter just runs the selected cell but keeps it in there. So so anyway, like and you can you can run or render both markdown or code cell. So shift enter will actually render it right. So now it actually renders the markdown um, from my markdown language into the specific level one, two, three headers, both of the items, bold, italic, kind of stuff. Um, um, one other thing, I mean, this is just kind of somewhat random, but. Um, um, it also accepts what's known as LaTeX markup, so you can actually do mathematical notation. You'll see we have, I've, um, I, I should probably mention, um, we will get into the mathematics of some of these things a little bit. It's not the primary focus of this class, 
but um, I do have some review materials. You know, so if, if it, to get the fullest out of this class, to really be understanding what's happening in deep learning, uh, machine learning stuff, you know, the, the, uh, a certain level of understanding of of uh, linear algebra and calculus and statistics is very important. Um, so, you know, you, you can do okay with this class uh, if you don't have kind of a deep understanding of those topics, but, but, but if you're really interested in getting into understanding it uh, at more than a surface level, um, those are, those are the, the mathematical tools that you need, right? So all machine learning heavily uses uh, linear algebra, uh, a little bit of, um, of um, uh, some calculus is very useful to understand uh, gradient descent and some other stuff. We will touch on some of that in a little bit, um, but um, 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 so you'll be fine uh, if you're not real fluent in that, but you'll get a lot more of the class. Um, you know, everybody should have already at undergraduate done some calculus and probably some linear algebra and stuff like that. Um, and uh, you might want to review some of those things if you have a chance, if you can, um, um, before we get to those topics here. So, but anyway, so back to this, you can also do uh, LaTeX and mathematic markup. So. Things like that. So. Um, anyway, um, I always use, I always like to point those out because these are the, you know, of, of course, most of you will be um, focused on running code in these, but um, uh, the, the, the really useful aspect of notebooks of, of cell based things like this is really the is really a readable kind of document. So being able to put in uh, descriptions and, 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 and uh, explanations of things in various ways. So, uh, in this reference environment, another thing I find useful is, um, you know, the, the level one, two, three headers um, all show up for outlines. So um, that allows you to easily move through documents. So most formal te technical documents are always going to be outlined into, you know, sections, subsections, sub subsections, and stuff like that, right? So uh, if you're using the, the, the level headers, you can move around uh, in the document to find those things basically using the the um, the built-in uh, table of contents or, or outline function. Um, all right, yeah, that, that was probably too much about the texting. So let's talk a little bit about the, the code kind of thing. Um, well, you'll probably be spending most of your time though, running code cells, okay? So um, one thing, um, I will repeat this, but you know, th these notebooks, um, most people, the, the standard is that they sh are, are meant to be run from the first cell to the last cell, right? So, so they are never really meant to be run out of order, where I define a value in a cell, but then use that, that value before I actually define it, at least linearly in the cells of the notebook, right? So that means for all your assignments, I expect, uh, so one, one way, like if I want to run all the cells of, of this notebook, um, um, I can do something like I can I can clear out everything. So if I want to check the output of all these cells here when it's running, I could do like a, a kernel restart kernel and clear all the outputs of all cells. So that that restarts the kernel. Um, and what the what the kernel is is that's actually running Python. So that that's called a kernel here in the Jupyter notebook. So that's running the the version of Python with all the libraries I have installed in this virtual environment. Um, um, that's, that's called our Python kernel or our language kernel. So if I restart that, you'll notice that all of my code cells, um, there's no number anymore. Uh, so it restarted my Python kernel, um, but it hasn't, re hasn't run anything yet. So like I did for this cell, for the, the markdown cell, I mean, you know, I can use uh, control enter to, to actually execute the cell and go to the next cell. Um, so if I hit control enter here for a code cell, it actually runs this code. That's, that's not a very good example of code, uh, but I can do it here. So there's the most basic kind of Python, right? So if I do control enter, um, it actually runs that cell. 
Um, notice that um, in by running these by hand um, for code cells, it keeps track of the order that they were run here. So that's what the numbers are, right? So I ran this cell first, it got numbered one since I ran it by hand first. And then I ran the cell second, got run by second, right? So, um, so for these lecture notebooks for the class uh, and for your assignments, uh, you know, I'm, I'm expecting you though, even though these are met mainly to be a format for reading stuff, uh, but it's, it's supposed to be interactive code, right? So don't just read the notebooks, you know, once we get into the content. I mean, actually put in code uh, and try things yourself, right? So change things, uh, change the, the range of things, you know, experiment. And that's what these interactive cell-based environments are really meant to be done with, right? So, you know, I can add in more code. And execute it again. Right. So now I've noticed I executed. That was the third time I executed. So it changed it to three. Right. Um, and back back to kind of the thought I started with. Um, um, when you do the assignments, I will say this again, but I expect it to run all cells in order uh, as it shows in the notebook. Right. And if it doesn't correctly do that, uh, you know, maybe the first time that happens, I'll just return it and tell you to fix it. If you keep doing that, I'll eventually just not grade the assignment, give you a zero, right? So um, what I mean by that, so an easy way to test that when you get to the point where you're doing the assignments is like if you do like a restart your kernel um, and clear all the cells, um, a good notebook, I should be able to run all cells. So one of, one of these quick buttons here is to actually restart the kernel and rerun all the cells from the first one to the last one. Or again, you can pull down kernel, uh, restart and run all cells, same thing. If you do that for your assignments, I, that's the first thing I do for the assignment that you submit, right? So I don't look at when you ran it, I, I rerun it and, and I rerun every cell. And you know, my first question is always, okay, if I, when I rerun everything, if I go down to the last cell, does everything run cleanly? Do I see all cells got executed and I see a result all the way down here at the very last code cell? Right? Um, you know, it's very easy, like, for example, um, you know, just to bring that home. Um, let me just do it, a real quick example, right, the, the first cell here. So, uh, so if I define a variable like a print, uh, say, or I just want to display the value in a variable called X here. But if I have a cell, if, if you actually, you know, when, when you're developing, when you're working on the assignments, it's, it's, it's easy to maybe do something later on and then come back and work on like a previous part of the assignment, right? So, so maybe I didn't define, I'll add a new cell here. I haven't done that before. So here I'm adding a new code cell by hitting the plus here. Um, Right, so I mean, this will work fine if I first execute this by hand to define X, and then if I rerun this, uh, it would work if I didn't have a syntax error. Right, so, so it'll display the value of five. But the problem with this is that the, the declaration of X is out of order. So if I just rerun the notebook, um, you're gonna get a zero for this notebook because when it reruns, You'll get to here, try to get the value of X, but that's not defined yet because you didn't define the things at all. Right? So, you know, uh, hopefully I don't have to say this too many times. It's always a problem uh, for classes. Uh, but, you know, the, 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 the last thing you want to do before you submit your assignments is hit that button there, rerun everything. And if it's not, if not everything is running cleanly, fix it before you submit it. Hopefully, all my lecture notebooks, um, uh, they're meant to all run cleanly, uh, every cell. So. so let's delete that cell, fix that. So, um, you know, the, the normal stuff applies here. I kind of skipped over that. But, you know, when you make changes, you, you, you need to save, you know, so if I've added cells or added code, I need to, to save it. 
uh, in order to get it saved. Um, and I'll just recheck that everything runs. Um, all right, so let's see. Um, all right, uh, what else about Python notebooks which would be useful here? So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I skipped over something, you know, so when you're doing the assignments, you'll have to do things like maybe add cells and stuff like that. So you can add code or markdown cells. Um, you know, I don't, I don't use Jupyter Notebook enough, but there's lots of kind of advanced stuff. So you can, you can actually select multiple cells and like, copy and paste them and move them around and uh, other stuff. I'll, I'll leave that to you guys to discover efficient ways to, you know, uh, work with these and get stuff in. So, um, um, this is a little bit random, but um, for the reference environment that I give you that need that, that, um, um, you can do the assignments in. Um, I have installed, uh, there's only one kernel, so you should only use that. Um, so this Python kernel actually has installed Python plus all the libraries uh, that you need. So like matplotlib and things like that. So, uh, again, if you install it on your own, um, you might use a different one, but, but make certain that the kernel that you're using has the basic um, libraries um, um, that we need. Um, and I'm getting ahead a little bit. Um, um, I might talk about some of this on Thursday because on Thursday, I'll probably talk a little bit about Python, some other stuff. I didn't want, really want to talk about it too much today. Um, so let me maybe kind of wrap up by giving a few more things about using like this Jupyter Hub environment, right? So you will need to have something set up so you can do stuff like this, right? So uh, here it's got four main, four or five main kinds of things, right? So the first one is just uh, to, bot, to browse the a file browser kind of thing so you can move around, right? So um, mostly for this class, you should have access to the lecture notebooks under the lecture subdirectory um, and the um, um, assignment notebooks. Um, again, like I said, you know, don't don't work too far ahead. But uh, assignment one is in there already, All right? Oh, uh, I know one thing I wanted to mention. Oh, um, um, I should go through and look at this, um, but that's fine. Although if I don't have the date right, you might want to update the due date. So the first um, uh, assignment is due like at the end of next week. Um, so not this Friday, but uh, next Friday after that. So uh, that would be like a nine eight nine eight. I might not have those due dates all updated correctly on the assignments. Right? So anyway, um, like working on these assignments, um, it's just an example. So like for this first one, this first question here um, for the first assignment, um, um, actually these first few ones are actually an example of a function. And then um, I'm gonna skip over that one. And then, you know, the um, down here is where the first thing you're supposed to do. So you're supposed to write your own implementation uh, an efficient version of this function is asked for here. So I'll probably go over some of this again, but um, there's some kind of good practices that I might mention when you do these assignments. So for one, um, you should always give what's known as uh, uh, Python documentation or function documentation. So lots of newer languages support stuff like this. So in Python, that takes a form of two uh, triple quotes, which allows for a multi-line comment or a multi-line string quote. Um, um, I actually had, maybe I won't rewrite that. So in the example function I had uh, was something like that. So a fairly standard um, um, 
thing for function documentation is to give a description and then to document any input parameters and document any return values from a function. So you'll see lots of things, uh, lots of uh, code projects will define function documentation looks something like this. Right? Um, so like on my Fibonacci efficient, uh, I might just copy that, but um, um, maybe modify the description. So create a efficient version that doesn't uh, suffer from exponential um, explosion calculation. Uh, Um, so as an example, show a syntax error in there. So for Python functions, a little bit of Python. So all Python functions start with a def to define the function. And it's required to have the open and close parentheses, uh, even if you don't have any parameter, but we were supposed to have a parameter, which was um, the uh, n, which is the, the nth Fibonacci that we want to calculate now. Um, so this is a little bit of a side, but yeah, you know, the, basically this is part of Python self-documenting thing. So this doc function, once you define the function, you can do things like, um, get the documentation using help and in other ways. So, so whenever you get documentation, uh, oh, that's, I should show that, uh, on, maybe next time I can show that. So, um, uh, oh, Fibonacci efficient. So if you ask for help, there are various ways of getting the documentation, the system documentation for things, but but basically like this help function will pull off the, the, the PyDoc documentation. That's what you're getting back when you ask for help. So I've, um, um, I, I, will, I will just mention this. I, I find um, there's a way to get context sensitive help, which will pull up this documentation, which can be very useful when you're doing NumPy and SciPy and things like that. So if you go to, um, um, so show contextual help under help. Um, and um, you can rearrange these things any way that you want. So I'm going to put it down here, the bottom half. So um, with contextual help, if I, in the context of a function, it'll, that's another way it'll also pull up documentation like for my Fibonacci um, up here. Oh, um, That. So yeah, in this context, I'm trying to call the Fibonacci efficient, passing at five, and it pulls up the, uh, the help. Thing. So might not look useful, but uh, yeah, especially if you're new to, you know, using any library scikit learn stuff, I think it'd be very useful to have that on so you can see, um, you know, descriptions on the parameters and the return values and stuff like that. I use the contextual help a lot uh, when I'm working with notebooks. Um, All right, um, yeah, so uh, one final useful thing I think um, is, so you know, when you're ready to submit these assignments, what I, what I want you to submit is the IPython notebook, all right? So uh, if you've got things set up correctly, uh, so when I just did that, I, I just you know, did my code to answer the question um, and I saved it. Um, I might wanna double check before I submit it that uh, everything's running cleanly. I don't get an error when I run all, rerun all the cells. Taking, oh, it's taking a surprising amount of time because uh, just, uh, again, I might probably talk about this later, but there is one cell that does a timing that takes a while. I didn't, I didn't really want to run that. That's, that might take a couple of minutes. You can actually comment that out um, if you want to, in order to uh, once you see what it's doing. So. Um, so, um, once you check, once you do your work, you save it, once you check, so here it didn't actually 
uh, get all the way done. So, you know, if I was if I was doing this as a student, you know, I'd want to I'd want to fix this before I submit it, figure out why that that's failing there instead of cleanly running that cell and the ones after it. Right. But assuming you're ready to submit it, then you know, basically, um, if you saved it like I showed here, there's going to be it's saving into that same file that IP, IPYNB. So you just need to get that uploaded to um, your MyLeo um, um, account. So uh, again, if if you're using this container, um, it should be doing the same file. So that that same file. If I look at my my file browser um, on my um, my host system, I can go to my assignments, you know, I can see here that um, it's a little bit tough to see, but, but uh, um, yeah, and that should be the same one that I was just editing, although I'm not certain what the timestamp isn't quite right there, but, but assuming you find the right one, that's the one you want to upload, right? So if, if you go into, um, your assignment, I might not be able to show it to you exactly here because I'm not, viewing this as a student. Yeah, I'm just changing over to the student view here. So like if you want if you're ready to submit assignment one. There should be, you know, uh, if you navigate the right place, there should be a, a place and that's the file that I want. I want the IPython notebook file with your safe work that's running all the cells cleanly from top to bottom. So um, if you're using these, these container environments, again, you, it should be the same file. So I should be able to navigate to my local system, to my repos, and my Python um, assignments. Oops. My Python class assignments, and then you know, the assignment one, whichever assignment that you want to upload and attach there. All right, uh, yeah, it's already a little bit longer than I was thinking. Um, any kind of last quick questions on that? I know I tend to go fast, yeah. How to, how to get what? The, the bit, oh, sure, sure. Um, the, the bit bucket page, the, the one for the class repository. So this one, the easiest way to do that uh, is to log into MyLeo online uh, and go to content. Um, getting started. Under getting started is the link to the the the, the Bitbucket repository. Yeah, and you need you need to find that. That has everything, pretty much all the materials. That, that that's what you were asking, right? Okay. All right. Okay, there's a lot more to say, but uh, we'll continue on this. I'll probably talk a little bit about Python on Thursday, right? So if at all possible, get Python up and working so you can actually do the stuff like I was doing right here before Thursday, right? That'd be the best thing to do so you can get into learning the materials and stuff. All right, I'll let you guys go. Uh, I can stick around for a few minutes. I'm heading over to my office um, after this as well. If anybody has questions, I'm going to ask Thank you.